Hi, everyone. This is Victoria Wolders, your My Kids Locker COVID 19 podcast host. This podcast is meant for less screens, more listening, more creating, and more innovating. I'm glad you joined us today. Today, we get to do a story called The Thwarp Forest. This title was actually invented by my son, James. So I hope that you enjoy this lesson. And we're going to start with a mindful moment. To part one. Are you comfy? Are you cozy? Well, get ready to listen. Here we are now in part one. Listen. Today, we get to have to celebrate Earth Day. Today is Wednesday, April 22nd. And it's such a wonderful opportunity for us to celebrate what it means to be on Earth and to be able to enjoy our Earth. We also have been really working on what it means to care and be kind. Today, our comment, our thought is choose to love today. Take some time to think about that statement. Choose to love today. Sometimes we struggle with our emotions. Sometimes we want to be angry. Sometimes we lash out. Today on Earth Day, choose to love today. Choose to love those around you. Choose to maybe plant a seed. Choose to maybe care for nature. Take some time to think about connecting with others who might need a little bit of love. Maybe you might want to FaceTime or Skype a relative who might be lonely. Maybe give them a call. But today's focus is choose to love today. Okay, we are now going to move on to part two. Create. Hi everyone, welcome back to part two today. We are going to create something amazing and let's get craft, 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 bye. Well, here we are, part two. I'm so excited that you've joined us today. Today, we are going to be focusing on a story called the Thorp Forest. And our activity today is focusing on art. So you get to draw a picture of the story. And perhaps you might want to include the Water Troll King, who is one of our characters today. The story today is about a magical forest called the Thorp Forest. The forest was cursed by the Water Troll King. If anyone dares to enter the forest, they must use empathy to battle the shame they will hear from their past hurts. Can empathy overcome shameful words? Hmm. Well, I guess you're going to have to find out. As we know, empathy is feeling what another person feels. When we deal with shame, shame are hurtful words that we say to ourselves to put us down. The only way to be able to truly overcome shame is to be able to empathize, to really feel what we feel, and also feel what other people feel. So if somebody puts you down, then basically what you try to do is feel what their pain is. Why are they saying what they're saying? Maybe their words are not meaning what they want to say, and they're mixing up on their words. Maybe their words are are from a place where they're hurting and they're angry. Remember, anger is a secondary emotion, often fueled by sadness and grief. Well, I hope that you enjoy today's story, and I look forward to seeing your pictures at hashtag MyKidsLocker, hashtag COVID-19 ad. I hope that you enjoy the story today. So if you're comfortable, then we will start the story called the Thorp Forest. Once upon a time, a long time ago, in the Oak and Eagle Kingdom, there lived a young girl, and this young girl had the most beautiful singing voice. She had this eloquent voice that would sound like a beautiful bird, and her name was Catherine. Catherine lived with her mother and her father on the edge of the Thorp Forest. 
in the land of the northern eagle. Her parents would always say to her, Catherine, never go into that Thorpe forest. And Catherine would always be a good girl. She would always say, okay, I'm never going into the Thorp forest. Years went by, and she'd often hear beautiful birds singing in the Thorp forest. But she never went in because she was told by her parents never to go in. One day, she was outside, and she saw the most beautiful bird that she had ever seen. The bird had beautiful blues, yellows, and pinks on its feathers. It had this melodic sound to it that was so beautiful. It sounded like she was listening to an angel. She saw the bird and it flew into the thwart forest. She started to walk into the forest and then she thought, oh, my parents don't want me to go in, so I better not. Mesmerized by this bird, she kept walking. And then she started to see it glow. All of a sudden, a wizard walked out from behind a tree. Oh, what are you doing here? Well, I saw this beautiful bird and I would like to hear it sing close up. The wizard answered, If possible, I would love for you to be closer to the bird and closer to me. She looked at him and she said, I would love to capture it and have it at home so I can look at it every day. He turned to her. That's my bird. Yet if you come here every day, I will let you take care of it and I will let you look and listen to it. Oh, please, she, she replied. However, my parents said that I should never come into the Thwart Forest. Well, some people do not like coming in here because you'll hear voices and sounds. Yes, I heard a beautiful bird sound and I just loved it. I think those are the voices and sounds you're talking about. He just smiled at her and said, Well, some people who listen to certain sounds don't think they're very good people. She said, Oh, well, I think this is great. And I would like to come visit you every day. Every sunrise, she would sneak through the for- Thorp Forest and she would walk into the Thorp Forest to talk to the wizard and see the magical bird. After a couple of days, she started to hear different voices. She was walking back and she heard a bird saying, You're not very good. You're not good enough. She also heard many voices saying, You know, maybe your mom and dad don't really love you. She started to ignore it. She was confused, but she thought to herself, Oh, it's probably just the birds. Over and over and over, she began to hear these negative words coming from the birds and the trees. It must be the whistling through the trees. Then one day, she saw the bird and the wizard. She shared with the wizard that she was sad, and she had heard strange sounds coming from the trees and the birds. The wizard shared, It's because you are in the thwart forest. Here you will hear sounds of shame. And these sounds will hurt you. 
The voices come from a curse from the water troll king. He put this curse on the Thwart Forest. Anyone who ever has had a thought or a word in their mind, or perhaps been given a word by other people that relates to shame, will hear those words in this forest. The voices get caught in the trees. His curse sticks to the birds' voices and the leaves in the trees of the thwarp forest. If you build up resilience to shame and if you empathize with the people's voices, then you will overcome them. She looked at him. I don't know what you mean. The wizard leaned over. Well, there are people who are hurt. Hurt people. Hurt people. When people have been hurt, either in their hearts or in their bodies, they will hurt other people because it makes them feel like they're in control. If you listen closely enough, you'll hear the people's voices from people you know. The girl looked at him. I remember last year, my grandmother, she met me in the village and she was laughing at me because she didn't like the way I was walking because I was born with two different lengths of legs and so I tend to walk awkwardly. My grandmother was laughing at me because she was a hurt person. She was born with a mother who was angry and her mother used to tell her she wasn't good enough. There was a lot of sadness in my grandmother's life. And when she looked at me and how I walked, she would laugh at me as well. I got to know my grandmother better. I realized that even though she chose to be unkind to me, she too was hurting. The wizard looked down at her. Yes, I think you've gotten it. I think it's time for you to go to the edge of the forest and you will see something there. Together, they walked to the edge of the thwarp forest. If you step through to the other side, you will be able to relive those experiences and be able to empathize and that is the cure to the shameful voices. The girl looked at him. What do you mean the other side? He said, look at your feet. And she looked down. They were on rocks and at the edge of the forest. He said, if you take one more step out, you will then be on grass. At this point, that is the edge of the thwarp forest. Once you step onto the grass, you will be at the very edge of the thwart forest. Here will be the place will you, where you will experience those shameful scenarios again. And you will be able to reenact them and be able to use empathy to cure yourself of the hurt that you have in your heart. She said, really? I don't know if I want to re-experience this again. The wizard said, well, if you ever do want to cure yourself of the painful sting of shame, you can go through those experiences for a second time and show empathy to that person and you will be healed. You can walk right through the forest and you will go 
through a time warp. However, if you look at your feet, you only have three steps onto the grass. After those three steps onto the grass, there is a cliff and you cannot go farther than that. So be very careful when you go to the edge of the Thwarp Forest to only stand on the grass and that will heal your heart. You will be able to go back in time to change your perspective and this will help you. The young girl thought to herself, oh well, this is really interesting. She walked back to her cottage and her mother and father were home. Her parents said, oh, where have you been? She said, oh, I've been listening to the birds. She chose not to tell her parents the truth. The father said, you know, your shoes are quite dirty. It looks like you've been in mud and there isn't any mud around here. The young girl looked at her parents. Father and mother, I have something to tell you. I have been going into the Thwarp Forest and been seeing the wizard. The wizard tells me that if I've listened to the voices in the trees and the birds, they will speak words of shame to me. However, if I use the power of empathy to try to empathize with the people who have hurt me, then I will help myself overcome pain. The parents said, really? Really? Is that true? We've been told that the Thwarp Forest is so dark and it's a bad place to go. We didn't want you to ever go there. The young girl said gently, well, I think if I take you there, perhaps you'll be able to forgive and be able to come to love people better. There is a freedom when you overcome shame. You can empathize with people and through empathy, there is healing. As she said that, she looked up onto the mantle above the fireplace. There was a carving of her grandmother's face and she said to her mother and father, I know that grandma passed away a couple years ago. I also know she passed away in her sleep. Both of you were hurt by some of the words she shared with you in her lifetime. I know I was hurt when she laughed at me when I could not walk properly through the village. And mother and father, you know I was born this way. I was born with two legs that are at different lengths. This is what makes me unique. This is what makes me beautiful. Yet, Grandma had difficulty understanding that. Mother, Father, why don't you walk with me through the Thwart Forest and hear the voices? I will then take you to the other side of the forest. At the edge of the Thwart Forest, there is a beautiful edge of green. And you will stand on there and relive those experiences. And you can learn to empathize and show empathy to the hurting person. And if you're able to do that, there will be healing. And there will be no shameful voices that will be stuck on the leaves and in the voices of the birds in the Thwart Forest. You will be able to hear and feel Grandma's pain. The mother and father said, Oh, that seems so hard. The father said, I think I can do it. But it's going to be challenging. The mother, with tears in her eyes, looked up at the father and the daughter and said, I don't think I can. 
This is too hard for me. I don't want to hear her voice again. It makes me so angry and sad. The father said, I think I can be vulnerable enough and strong enough to walk through that for us. And he reached out his hand and held the mother's hand. So the next day, the father and the daughter held hands and walked through the thwart forest. The sun was setting and they started their walk. Now, she was happy to be with her father because they could experience this together. The father started to hear his mother's voice. You're not good enough. You don't take care of your wife. You don't take care of your child. Tears ran down Catherine's father's face. They walked through the forest. Catherine waved to the wizard and the bird that was there. The wizard opened the cage to the beautiful bird and the beautiful bird flew to Catherine and landed on her shoulder. The bird, Catherine, and her father continued to walk. As they walked, she turned to the bird and said, My father is here to overcome shame. We must walk with him to help him know he is not alone. As the father and daughter kept walking, they went through the forest, and all of a sudden, as he stepped his foot out of the thwart forest, he stepped into this magical world. He was back in his mother's cottage. There she was. She was saying, you're not good enough. He held out his hand in peace and said, I know you have been hurt. I know that your mother and grandmother had said words of hate to you. You too have experienced shame. And I know that you are in pain. I forgive you. I love you. I know that you have passed now, but I want you to know that everything will be okay and that your granddaughter is here. Catherine is loved and cared for. Dear mother, I know your pain. Even though you might not see it now, we love you and we care for you. The grandmother's faint image hugged the father and said, You are right. I am sorry. She said, I am going to give you a feather. This is a feather of a bright blue bird that will guide you to always forgive. As they picked up the feather, a gust of wind came by and flew it high into the sky. Catherine realized that it was the same feather that would come from her beautiful bird on her shoulder. The wind had taken it away and they had it no longer. They stepped out from the edge of the thwart forest and they began to walk through the thwart forest again. They passed the cottage with the wizard and they walked out. As they walked out, they noticed the wizard waving and the bird had flown away from her shoulder and had landed now on the wizard's shoulder. They walked out of the thwart forest and back into the cottage where the mother was waiting. The mother said, You wouldn't believe it, but I just found the most beautiful feather outside our door. The father looked at the daughter and said, Yes, we have just been able to talk to Grandma again. We know we love her and we forgive her. The whole family hugged and they took this precious blue feather and put it close to the sketch of the grandmother. Catherine, her mother, and father all remembered the importance of empathy 
and the importance to remember that empathy is the one cure for shame. Feeling what another person feels and the importance of forgiveness. The end. Hi, everyone. It's time to innovate. Part three. Hi, and here we are in part three. I hope you enjoyed the story, The Thwarp Forest. Now we get to focus on an extension piece. So what problems are there in your, in our local environment? I want you to take some time today to research and learn about what environmental issues are going on in your community. Then take some time to learn about what people are doing about them. Are your governments meeting to talk about how to decrease air pollution? Are nonprofit organizations going to local creeks and rivers and cleaning up? Are classrooms going out to their playground and picking up garbage? How are people in your community saving our environment and treating it well? Well, I hope that you enjoyed our extension lesson today. You might want to pause now if you need to think about it and do some more research. I'm going to wrap up and I want to thank you so much for being part of our World Environment Day today. It's April 22nd and I'm glad that you were able to be part of our Thwarp Forest story. Take some time to think about less screens, listening, creating, and innovating. I hope you have a wonderful day. And I'll see you in the next episode.